Congratulations to you both on the film. Um, David, I gather you originally intended to write a book about this, <laughs> but it didn't quite happen. So <laughs> what did happen and how did Julian come across your story? I, yes, I did try and write a book, actually. Um, I wrote uh, seven or eight chapters of climbing, the climb, narrating the climb I'd just been on, and I decided that I would choose seven or eight idiosyncratic elements from my past that I thought mapped back to my childhood. Extremes of personality. And I wove them like that, so that when you got to the top of the mountain, you get to the low point of the story. And I thought it was genius. And I handed that to book agents who thought the exact opposite. And they opposite. didn't. They, they said, could you please get rid of all the climbs? It's really boring. <laughs> but if you wrote 15 <laughs> chapters of personal, come back. And a fit of hubris, I slung it in the bottom drawer. My, my wife gave it to a friend of a gym who gave it to her husband who decided they wanted to make movies. That was it. And it was like a chain reaction almost. Yeah, in, unbelievable. In that right, way. Yeah. And what was your reaction when you first came across this story, Julian? Well, I, the very early draft of the script I read, not knowing it was true, who it was about, not knowing what the subject matter was at all, which I think they were quite clever in doing that. And in a way, I wish audiences could be innocent with this film and have the same reaction as I did, because you go through, you know, I went through a whole range of reactions from, you know, the sort of delight in certain parts of the childhood to feelings of foreboding to uh, getting completely involved in this um, the ups and downs of the relationship with Vanessa and then feeling you know us in the end very moved and emotionally wrung out really uh, by this sort of cathartic journey and I thought it was I thought it was a very important story to tell I did think it was also you know would make a good film because the incidents in David's life are extremely unusual and colourful and um, and involved quite a lot of very strong and intriguing personalities. So I was hooked. So David, how, how involved were you in the, in the making of the film? Were you on set at all? Did you work very closely with Julian? I was on set every single day, I think. I don't think I missed one. I, at first, the reason was uh, fear, apprehension. Um, I knew what was in the script and I was afraid that the salacious elements would be extracted. Even though I knew what was in the script, I thought if I weren't, wasn't well, somehow I was going to create a brand new script but in the back story. pocket. it's your story. And there was a sense of making sure that it, it stuck to the literal truth as, as best I could tell it. And, um, and I, at first I was nervous and then in very no short order, Julian proved that he was as um, rigorous about maintaining that authenticity, that that uh, correlation to the truth, as I was, to the to the extent that one particular day, um, something happened that was marginally outside the truth, and I remember him turning around with a sheepish grin on his face and saying, "You didn't like that, did you?" And I went, <laughs> "I just sort of," mm. and I think that was the only input, like material input, I, I can really remember. But yeah, for the first week, I was this close. <laughs> And by the sixth week, I was more away. like that. Yeah. I do remember on the first day of filming, we were doing a very sensitive scene with Anna Friel and looking left, and there was this pillar, and David was literally behind the pillar. I could just see him peeping out, looking at the scene. Um, I will never forget that first day. <laughs> What's it like watching somebody play you and seeing your life unfold in front of your eyes like that? The, 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 I've got to figure out the right word for that. I don't want to use some sort of surreal, because it is, but it's totally and unbelievably surreal. But after a while, you become a third person to it. You look at it from a distance. There are moments that were intensely profound. When I first day of shooting, Anna Friel walked in, the absolute carbon copy of my actual mother, and I actually had so little to do with Anna Friel, I didn't know really much about her at all. And when she walked in, I, I came pretty close to, like, wobbling. It was uncanny likeness. Really, when I reached South Africa and watched those scenes, that was the, that was the most emotionally taxing two weeks of my life, watching little Hugo Stone uh, play out my life. And I'd invested so much in this child. He's not only naturally the beautiful, most beautiful thing ever to walk the face of the earth, which made my life difficult watching him play out scenes that was so close to my DNA. 
we mentioned Anna Friel, who plays your mother. Um, I've got to ask this, because when I was watching the film, I couldn't help but notice there was a distinct resemblance between Anna Friel and Emily Beecham, who plays the wife. And I wondered if this was coincidence or actually deliberate. Well, there's, there's, uh, they both have a warmish coloured hair, should we say, so that there is that. It was, it was more than that. It was definitely yes. in the face. I mean, I, mean, I think there's a... Uh, it, what, we didn't go out to do that. We, we tried to pick the best people for the part. Um, but I don't, I don't, in a way, think that was a, you know, a terrible thing for the film. I think it, there's something intriguing about that. And one other of your pieces of work that I'm familiar with, of course, is Appropriate Adult, which, of mm. course, was the, the miniseries about Fred and Rose West. Um, another very, very dark story mm. um, what does telling stories like that demand of you as a director and indeed as a person yes uh, I mean well I do try and mix it up with light affair so sort of uh, uh, as well I mean I think it, it sometimes these extreme situations um, allow one to really examine what what how a, how a person reacts under them and the psychology of that and I think it's it's you know a film is a safe place you as an audience you can go there and you can come come home again and uh, it raised the both those two things raised important issues I think and questions about our humanity and I think I think that's what film should do it should demand that it shouldn't just be a forgettable experience where you you know the films I admire aren't just popcorn they I want to come away with something uh, I want to come away with a question a debate and uh, so I suppose that's why I was drawn to both those things not necessarily because they were dark but because they were tackling an important issue um, that that is is in in the, in the culture at the moment so certainly you have done that with this David, Julian, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.